Here I'm going to be debugging the C recursion project using Visual Studio. I've already added three breakpoints and they're shown by the red circles in the margin. Now I'm going to start the debugger in Visual Studio, that's by pressing F5. And uh, we're now in debug mode. Now at the first step through the debugger, it breaks. You can see the little yellow arrowhead uh, overlaying the breakpoint. It breaks on line 10. Um, so that's because the sum recursion uh, function has been called and it's just hit that line. Now let me resize these windows so that you can see both Visual Studio and the output from the program. Right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the variables n and total down to the watch window down here so that we can see how their values change as we as I continue through the debugger. Right, so there they are. So the breakpoint's been hit and you can see that both the variables now have the value 1, both n and total. Now the test total is less than 3 evaluates to true. So n is now passed as an argument when the sum recursion function is, recalled, recur is called recursively here. And I'll continue the debugger until the breakpoint is hit again. So I'm going to press F5. And once again, uh, 1 is added to both variables. So n you can see is now 2 and total is also 2. Now n is once more passed back to sum recursion. And I'll continue debugging. Again, I'll press F5. And now you can see that, um, again, the breakpoint is hit in the recursive function call. Yet again, 1 is added to both variables, giving each the value, as you can see in the watch window, of 3. But this time, the test condition fails, since total is no longer less than 3. So the code that calls the function recursively on line 10, well, that's skipped. So this time, my breakpoint there isn't hit. And I continue with the next line of code. And so it hits the printf on line 12. Now let's press F10 in Visual Studio. That will execute that line of code. And it goes on, and you can see, and it prints out in uh, some information in the uh, output window. So you can see there that the values of n and total are, as expected, both 3. Now, having arrived at the end of this function, the flow of control moves back to the line of code immediately following the code that originally called the function. So here, the line of code that called the sum recursion function happens to be inside the function itself. And the first executable line that follows is, once again, the final line of the function, which prints out the values of the two variables. Now let me continue with debugging. I'll press F5. And once again, that breakpoint, the breakpoint on line 12, is hit. But now I've gone back to an earlier point of execution, the point at which I recursively called the sum recursion function. Now at that time, the value of n was 2. And that's its value now. Again, I can see that in the watch window. Now, if this seems confusing, just try to think what would have happened if n had been 2 and then I called some other unrelated function. On returning from that function, n would, of course, still have had the value 2. And that's all that's happened here. The only difference is that this function happened to call itself rather than some other function. And when that call returns, we're back within the scope of the original function and the value of n remains what it was at that time. Now, getting a picture of that in your mind is probably the trickiest thing of all about understanding recursion. And if you can't grasp it right away, don't worry. You'll see lots more examples throughout this course. 
So once again, the function call has exited and let me press F5, carry on debugging. And the control once again returns to the next executable line following the code that called the function. So again, my breakpoint on line 12 is hit and n's value has taken another step back into its own history. It now has the value 1. The total variable, however, lives outside the function, and that's unaffected by recursion, so it still has the value 3. And I'll continue debugging, F5. Now this time, recursion has ended, and the flow of control resumes in the main function. So here, my breakpoint on line 20 is hit. OK, so now let's look at the uh, output. And you can see that's down here. So we can see that the value of total started at 0. When some recursion was called first, its value was incremented to 1. The sum recursion function was then called recursively twice more. So total ended up with a value of 3. Now, the value of the argument n was also incremented in each recursive function call, but that value is local to the function itself. Down here on line 12, it retains the value that was assigned up here on line 6. So on the first turn through the function call, its value is 1. Then when the function is called recursively, it's 2. When it's called recursively again, it's 3. But after each call to a function exits, n retains the value it had before that function call. So let's think of this as three function calls. Call 1 from main, the value of n is 1. The fact that another function call is made here doesn't alter that within the scope of the first function call, n retains the value of 1. But within the scope of the second function call, n has the value 2. Now keep that idea in mind for now. The way this actually works will become clearer when I explain stack frames later in this course. But for now, it's enough to know that each function call has its own local variables with their own local values.